and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on or brought put to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord.
ago, I think. I know it's such a time as this. Sometimes words seem to not be enough to take us where we need to go. But I just want you to know that in spite of circumstances, situations, God is still God. He's with you, been with you, and will continue to be with you. I bring you greetings in the name of God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greetings of peace, love, and joy. Thanking God for the opportunity to stand before you. I count the honor and I count the privilege to be able to stand with you. For the family, for the wife, for our special friends that we up to you today. And there's no way it's easy. But it's going to be. And I always say it's not going to be all right. It's already all right. God has always given you what you need to make it through. And with family, and friends, let us pray. Father, in the name of Son, Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that everyone under the sound of my voice hear from you today that you would just reach out and catch somebody. Embrace this family as only you can. Fill this place, every nook, every crack. Fill it with your Holy Spirit. Let nothing be in here that's not about love, not about joy, and not about peace. Let no bitterness, let no animosity or anything that's not like you enter into this place. Fill us with joy unspeakable. Oh, God, raise us up as only you can. A special blessing goes up to this family right now. Speak to the very depths of your spirit as only you can. You said tears of sorrow, and you will turn into tears of joy. We thank you for a life where I live. We thank you, Lord, oh, God, for memories that will be held down through the years. And we give your name the most high praise. Hallelujah. And we thank you right now by saying amen. 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 And amen. <coughs> oh, saints, why don't you put your hands together and give God some praise. It's still. God is still. God is still God all by himself. As we move forward with the service, we have our behavior and second family. We're going to just move on to what God said to Lord. And that's all right. Testament coming out of a familiar passage in the book of Psalms, the 23rd Psalm. I said, you would just bear with me as we read the word of God to usher in the spirit of God. The word of God says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod and thou stand, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's word for God's people. The New Testament, Matthew, St. Matthew, chapter 11, starting at verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And again, God's word for God's people. <coughs> We have a musical selection right now. Keep me in your will so I won't be in your way.
Let me tell you something, Bob. Uh, you, you have to excuse me because it's hard for me not to get excited. Because when I think about life and think about the times that individuals have lived and it's time to <coughs> share and those things, it's hard to remain not joyful in spite of circumstances. Because life is still life. All of us are going to have to make this journey one day. But to think about the love, all the joyful moments, all oh, somewhere down in there, that smile is still down there. And this is a service of what? Celebration. We're here to celebrate life. Celebrate life, saints. Can you celebrate? Somebody should say thank you, Lord, for 64 years that God allowed him to be here. Is that all right? Amen. Oh, we will be all right. Can, can I say it again? Amen. No, I'm going to take that back. We ain't going to be all right. We're already all right. Thank you, Lord. You just don't know it yet. But when you leave here, Oh, you're going to be all right. Can I, can I say that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it if I got to just make myself believe. Is that all right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At this time, we're going to have acknowledgments and the visionary reading by Monica Butler. Is that all right? Yes. Yeah. Let me, Monica, let me hit you right. Monica Smith Butler. I'm going to get that right. Is that all right? Take your time. The obituary. Kelvin Leroy Owens, age 64, was born on July 14, 1956, in Baltimore, Maryland, to the late John and Irene Owens. On September 14, 2020, Kelvin departed this life and answered God's call to enter into eternal rest. Beatty, as he was fondly called, received his education from the Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Thereafter, he began his career with the Maryland State Highway Administration, where he was employed as a heavy equipment transportation operator. During his tenure with SHA, Kelvin received many accolades for his unwavering dedication and commitment to service. After 42 years of outstanding service, he retired. On June 8, 2012, Kelvin was united in holy matrimony to his sweetheart, Joy S. Simmons. Through marriage, Kelvin was blessed with two daughters, Rashonda and Yolanda, one, cell, one son, Jarrell, and four grandchildren, Kiara, Jamar, Caden, and Jordan. Kelvin was a devoted and loving husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, and friend to many. He was a good-spirited, kind-hearted person, always willing to lend a helping hand, especially to his family and close friends. No matter when his family and friends called upon him, he never complained and was there to assist where needed even despite his illness. Kelvin was an avid football fan. He enjoyed watching his favorite football team, Dallas Cowboys. Whenever they played, he often shared jokes with others about the rivalry games. Kelvin was also an avid wrestling fan. You would often find him watching wrestling every Monday and Friday nights. He enjoyed listening to oldies but goodies music. It wasn't uncommon to find Kelvin and Joy at Lamont's Entertainment Complex, enjoying music and dancing with the crowd. He also enjoyed playing the Maryland Lottery and often found himself amongst the luckiest win winners. Kelvin was the heart of his family. He was truly dedicated to his family, which will leave an unreplaceable void. Kelvin leaves to cherish his memory, his forever love and devoted wife of eight years, Joy S. Owens, three stepchildren, Rashonda Matthews, Yolanda Parker, and Jarrell Medley, four grandchildren, Kiara Pratt, Jamar Greer, Caden Henson, and Jordan Greer, whom he had a very special bond with, two sisters, Edna Owens and Brenda Owens, one brother, Larry Warner, one aunt, Rose Owens, two sisters-in-law, in Shirley Owens and Quanda Smith, three brothers-in-law, Albert Kennard, Quinnell Simmons, and Kelvin Smith, 
and a host of, host of nieces, nephews, and friends, including special niece Cindy Kennard, and special friends Thomas Davis Jr., Charles Windsor, Sean Owens, and Leroy Moore. When God cares, God cares when we lose someone so special. We never understand why someone caring, kind, and good would, leave, would have to leave us long before we ever thought they would. Yet comfort comes in knowing God is with us every day and grieves with us when one so full of goodness slips away. And so we trust his steadfast love through sorrow, pain, and fears as he holds us gently in his arms and wipes away our tears. With God's love loves comes the prayer that you will find peace in the care of those who walk with you th through this difficult time. In symp sympathy, the whole girls, Stephanie, Veronica, and Karen. Promises of God's comfort and hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Thanks to be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Edna and Brenda and family, may God's hope filled promises bring comfort to your soul and peace to your heart with heartfelt sympathy. Mr. and Mrs. Moreland. There are certain people who touch the lives of those they know in a unique way. Knowing them brings us joy and inspiration. And when they're gone, memories of all they've done stay with us. Joy, your loved one, was one of those people to me. I'm grateful to have known such a special person. With, with sympathy and understanding, love Shamika and Jaquela. Right now, when your loss is so fresh, it may be difficult for you to imagine that this pain will ever go away. But in time, the blessing of God's unfailing grace will soften the hurt that you're feeling and bring your heart the peace, comfort, and hope that it needs to heal. Until then, please remember there's a circle of friends surrounding you who are embracing you and lifting you up in prayer. Love you, Kwanda and Calvin. With sympathy, dear Miss <clears throat> Owens, Kelvin faced terminal illness greatly, and, and with coverage, I'm sorry we could not save him. I do hope hospice was helpful to both of you at the end. May loving memories of yesterday bring you strength today. With sympathy, sincerely, Peter Graves. What is a brother? A brother is someone who is there when you need him. He picks you up when you fall, no matter, no matter the time or day he answers every call. Didi, you gave no one a final farewell, nor did you say goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only go, God knows why. Every day we will miss you coming to the house, and most days we will cry. If love could have saved you, we wouldn't be here saying goodbye. In life we loved you dearly, in death we love you still. You hold a special place in our hearts no one will ever be able to fill. Our hearts were broken the day we lost you, but you didn't go alone because part of us went with you when God called you home. You would come in the house and say, Brenda, get up, get out of my spot. Or you would sit on the phone with me, Edna, whether you was feeling well or not. We will meet again someday in a better place. We're not in a rush to leave this earth, but when we do, we'll be happy again to see a smile on your face with love. Thank you, sister. At this time, who 
go ahead, reflections by family and friends. Does Pam have requested a minimum of two minutes if anybody wish to bring forth reflections at this time? Feel free to come forth. Whenever we called on him, we didn't have to worry. B would be there for us. And B, because of B, we have a new sister-in-law who we love just as much as we love B. So um, last, it was a Sunday a week ago, right? Sunday a week ago, I went to spend an hour and a half with B, looking at games and stuff. So I told B, I said, B, I gotta go home because I cook dinner and I'm hungry. I'm going home to eat. He said, okay. And then when I got up to go, he said, I'm gonna call you later on. I said, okay. And then after I got home at my dinner, then I got the call that I need to come back down to B's house. And I went there and I found that B was sick. So all I could do was pray and ask God to help him. You know, but B was a kind hearted person. I don't care when you call or when we call him, day or night. B would get out of his bed and come to us and see what he could do for us. So I just thank God for 64 years with my brother. First, I'd like to give honor to God. I give honor to the pastor, uh, Pastor um, Medley, and, uh, and also to the family. And uh, I'd just like to thank God for the Owens family and the Simmons family. And I know just, I'd just like to say that God is in control no matter what. He said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He's always with us. Um, I'd like to uh, bring you greetings from uh, the Christian Community Church of God, where my pastor, Dr. Melvin C. Green, is the pastor, and I'm associate elder at the church. And I would just like to say uh, some encouraging words from uh, that Jesus said. He said that uh, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Or, and he, but really, he started off, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'd like to stop there and, says, and say that, you know, God has already called Beatty home, you know, into one of his special places and one of his mansions that he has already prepared for him. And not only him, but all those, all of us who believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, uh, I would just like to also say um, that, um, you know, we just can be thankful to God for uh, Beatty. I really didn't get to know him real well, but from the tribute that Joy um, put in the program, I see that he was a person that was had a gift the gift of works, you know, as I heard his sister say as well, that uh, he would get out of his bed and if you called on him, he would be there. And that is so special, you know, that uh, God would bless him with the gift of works, you know, that you know that we, he'd be helpful one to another. And that's important. So may God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.
he was a great husband, he will be missed tremendously. Um, Bibi and I have grown extremely close over the last few years. Not that we weren't close prior to, but his illness definitely brought us closer together. Um, I will definitely miss seeing him every day, going into the house, joking with him, asking him if he ate, if he took his medicine. For some reason, um, I was the only person that he truly listened to. I don't know why, um, but I just, it's, it's hard when you lose someone that you love, even despite knowing that you know they, they're sick and you still don't want to see them leave. Um, but in my heart, I know that BD is in a better place. And for that, it gives me much comfort in knowing mm -hmm. that he is with God and that he is no longer suffering. And I just want to thank him for, again for just being a wonderful husband to my mother, as well as a father, grandfather, friend, brother, and anything else that you can think of. Good morning. Good morning. Beauty was my home. I would miss him so much. Me and Uncle Beatty got close when he got sick. On my days off on Wednesday, he will always call me. What you doing today? You working? Nah, I'm not working. Today, Wednesday, Uncle Beatty. Well, get up and get dressed. I'll be at the house to get you. I got to go to the dump. I need to come down and cut my grass. And then any time I don't have a ride to work, I call Uncle Beatty. He might fuss at me a little bit, just a little bit, but he will surely be at the house. Half the time I wasn't ready to dress, they outside blowing the hole. You called me for a ride, you're not ready? <laughs> Uncle Beatty, I'm sorry. <laughs> but me and Uncle Beatty got close, real, real close. Anytime he called me, I get up out of bed, down to his house, help him and any chores. In any way, in any means necessary. What I'm saying is, Uncle Beatty was a good guy. He was like my second father. When I was doing wrong, he pulled me to the side, tell me. Don't, you're not going right. I'm going truly, truly. Let's go over here. been doing B the old years. Real, real good, truly a good uh, friend. You know, uh, I had also worked with Stabler when he, you know, anything that you would ask him that he would do, you know, even to a ride or, you know, just lend a hand, give him some money. August, we're going to have a, another musical selection, and then the next voice you hear, you once again be mine. And you know, best be the, that's the, that's only, that's only God again. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Say, your hands all right? Everybody hands all right? Mm -hmm. let, me, let me see you raise your hand one time. Both of them. Let me, let me check a look around here. Okay, I don't see no cast. I don't see no bandages.
Spirit, Lord, for this strategic hour, that I might preach your holy word with consecrated power. I should bless Lord, those the listening audience, Lord, that you would move by your Holy Spirit. You have, you work in them what you know to be needed. In the name of Jesus Christ, use this vessel to your glory as only you can. I thank you in advance for what you're about to do. I claim it all done by saying amen. 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 Once again to the family. I bring blessings upon you. I thank God for this opportunity. And I was, I, I've been trying to hold back for a long time, and it's not easy to hold back. But I look at the old yellow truck when I came in, because I'm an old stable old man myself. <laughs> and truth be told, we didn't, didn't know what y'all might not know. But to celebrate, we just here to celebrate the life of Calvin D. Roy Owens, a.k.a. Beat it. I know what goes on inside those trucks and on the outside. Not that going on the inside, you don't want to talk about it on the outside. You cannot just say that. No, no, oh, I know y'all might not want to hear But I, been down that road, been on that journey, and one thing about the state highway, no matter whether the weather's cold, whether the weather's hot, state road, they out there, those guys out there, when a whole lot of people are not. And the things they endure, the things they deal with, believe me, and I know for a fact, and being put in 42 years with the State Highway Administration, I was out there some 30 some years myself. I know what you have to deal with inside and outside. Not just with the rebel, but people as well. And to be able to endure, you know, when times like this, if truth be told, because that's the only thing I can talk about is truth. If truth be told, at times like this, many people, uh, they always got two questions most times. They got a what? And a was. You always got a what and a was, especially to have us. What happened to him? What took place? Everybody want to know. Then it's a was. Was he saved? Or did he know the Lord? Say, let me tell you something. Many of those that ask that question don't even know the Lord himself. And when they ask those questions, let me just tell you something and lay a foundation for you, if I might. If you ever look at the news and there's an airplane crash or there's a train wreck. Before they give out any information to anybody, they always say, we're going to hold back our information until we find anybody with me. 
Amen. The black box. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all can talk to me. Oh, this ain't that kind of funeral where you can't. This, this real. This is a celebration. But you don't say anything until they find the black box. Because everything else they say will be what? An assumption. It, it will just be assuming. You know how soon something happens? Not just on an airplane or train. Anything happened in life. What's the first thing somebody runs in? I heard somebody told me. But an assumption is just somebody stating fact without proof. So the fact that somebody said whether he was saved or wasn't saved, unless they got the black box. See, the black box we got is our soul. And God's the one that holds my soul and yours. So if somebody asks, is he or wasn't, talk you or I, unless they got, can I talk to you? Yeah. Unless they got the black box, everything else is just an assumption. They're just assuming. And we know the old street thing said, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. Good God, y'all don't want to talk to you, do you? Miss Joy, can I talk to you? Good Lord, have mercy. And, and any time, let me tell you something. When I was talking to Miss Joy and she was telling me some pains of my feet, I was I, I could I was hung the phone up. Because when she was talking, it was like she was talking about me. And I said, hey, well, Peter done stole my identity. <laughs> the thing she everything she was telling about his life and just came right down my street. And I was I was I, mean, I was some kind of excited. And when I think about her name, Joy. Y'all gotta break these things down. I see why BD was hooked up with her. Joy, J O Y. Jesus first, others next, and yourself last. <laughs> that means you put other people before you. Yeah. How are you gonna not love somebody <laughs> that care more for you than yourself? I'll give if I I give you what I ain't got to make sure you're all right. That's true joy. Can you? Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. That's true. I'm gonna say it again. I just talk to Joy. I wouldn't talk to y'all. <laughs> when I asked her, I said, what, what do you miss the most about him? She said, everything. Good God. <laughs> y'all, can y'all hear me? She said, everything. You know, some people will just say they missed the what? The good stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, Joy broke everything down to me. She said she missed the good and the bad. Because it took it all to make him who he was. Yeah. And if you really love somebody, yeah. you gotta love them through the good. Yeah. If you're only gonna love the good stuff, then that ain't real love. That's right. Because soon things hit the wall, that means somebody's packing their bag. <laughs> but when you can love them, through it all, good God Almighty, who wouldn't want a relationship like that? Huh? <laughs> Cause I, then she said he was a fair man. That means he was even across the board. How he dealt with one, that's where he dealt with another. Good Lord have mercy. If you want to know for purposes of God's man, she said he treated his enemy the same as his friend. Ain't that God? God said he's no respect that's right. of persons. That's right. That means he don't just take you because of who people say you are. He dealt with you because of who he saw you as. And what that means is, people could say you were this or that, it didn't change him. He dealt with you out of his love for you. Yeah. He let other people say it and do what they want. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Can I, can I preach this thing a little bit? If I got to say hello, that means somebody ain't going to put the she, she was telling me, she said, when she was talking about the 44 years of state service, I was sitting there saying, I, I been with the state. I worked in them trucks. I drove them trucks. I worked in that snow. I've been out there in the cold. I cleaned up after hurricanes and tornadoes. I know how it is to work in certain places. I know what he had to endure all those years. So 42 years, that's, that's being dependable. And ain't nobody no more dependable than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I know he had the spirit of Christ in him. So for 42 can y'all hear me say? Amen. Amen. These days, came, people came to stay married for 42 days. That's what we're going to job for 42 years. Good Lord have mercy. Now, y'all ain't going to talk to me. That's all right. She was saying he raised a garden. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about God now. It takes patience yes, it 
Yes, to raise a God. Mm -hmm. And God wants you to have some patience. And I know he was a godly man because to have patience enough to raise a God. Because most people will throw the seed and then come out tomorrow morning and start eating tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to plant and then wait. And it takes patience to wait. Because once you put the seed in the ground, now it's in the hand of the Lord. And he brings it forth when he's ready. Anybody ever waited for a check? Kept running to the mailbox every day. Ain't had no patience. <laughs> huh? Peeping through the curtain. Is, is that the mail? Every time you heard a little something rumble. Is that the mailman? <laughs> oh, you want that check. But no matter how impatient you are, it's not going to come until it comes. So you just well live back. Enjoy life. Y'all, oh Lord have mercy. Oh, that, that's my man right there. Y'all can excuse me for a minute. I got knowledge of my man, Cornell, a.k.a. Coon. Oh, uh, to know him is to love him. Good Lord have mercy. It's that beating love baseball. And I love some baseball myself. Oh, I love me some baseball. And he loved going to the games. And so that means he was a fun loving person. He was a person that liked to be around other people, to socialize with people. It's good to interact with other people. And sometimes, not just people that think like you. It's good to get different thoughts. It's good to find out how somebody else moves. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And then you talk about the older, but good. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I can say, oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, love me some oldest, but good. Oh, Pastor, you don't supposed to know about that stuff. Hello. <laughs> I wasn't born no pastor. Good right. God Almighty. Right. And, I, and I'm sure at many times, laying back, I'm sure he enjoyed kicking back together. Our bitch old beat would walk up, tripped over, and say, if love you is wrong, <laughs> I don't want to be right. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. The Lord will bring you back now. And I, I got I to gotta ease up on it because sometimes I get a flashback, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, I, and watch you talk, I'm saying, good God, man, this man, what the, I mean, this man should have been hanging together. Then he talked about it when I saw it, you know, when, when Quinn called his name, how you don't see people for a long time. And I can only speak for me because I'm, I'm getting older. I don't remember names as much as I remember faces. And when you don't see a person for a long time and name is not mission around you, you lose track of people's names, if truth be told. Because I'm just speaking for myself, I ain't talking to you. But you, have you ever somebody walk up to you, talk, call your name? Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, son? I ain't seen you in a long time. And name it, and you be like, how you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, boy, I ain't seen you in a long time. And your mind burning. And you be like, hey, oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me pull a name. You, you, you look at the ear. You look at her eye, and you try to find something for me, sweet honey, you know what I'm talking about. You try to find something to bring, to bring that memory back. And, and you, you go on talking to me four or five minutes, and conversation going, and finally, you feel bad. Because truth be told, a lot of time pride won't even let you ask the person what their name. Uh -huh. You stand there talk 10 or 15 minutes, and the person, man, you know what I'm doing, boy? You say, I got you, I got you. <laughs> and you go on talking to your man, Lee. You say, boy, I get to you, catch up with you later. Yeah? You say, man, look, I love you, son. Love you, bro. You say, oh, everything, because you don't know the name. Yeah, you're my man now. You say, all that. And the person leaves, and you say, what was that man's name? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me say? Um, Sometimes you got to let pride go. Yeah. There's no shame in not remembering. That's right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. The greater thing is being real and being honest. Yes. And then next time, perhaps you see the individual, you'll be the one to break out first yes. and call a name and make that person feel as though their living is not in vain. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, I'm going, okay, I keep going. Good Lord, have mercy. Anytime I say too much, just like in school, you just raise your hand. <laughs> I said it right now. 
You know, people say, I heard it said and saw it in, in the program, they like to play numbers. You know, let me say something. Those that are, let me, how, let me put this in a general way. Because you find some people that are so heavily bound that they ain't no earthly good. Mm -hmm. And they will say, he played numbers every day. And then they say, I don't see how he could play numbers. They say, but I mean, I, I play my scratch offs. <laughs> <laughs> Saints, the bottom line is, playing numbers don't keep you out of heaven. I'm, can I talk to you? I'm going to just get real with you. And I'm not encouraging nobody to do nothing. Drinking a cold Miller Lite, sometimes when you're by yourself at night, that does not keep you, that does not void you from going to heaven. The only thing that keeps you out of heaven is if you do not believe on the Lord and Savior, yes, Jesus Christ. Yes, the bottom line is, can y'all talk to me? People got a, a, a propensity to put people where they think mm -hmm. they should be. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. I better, I'm going to move on. Sure. That, 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 that's, that's deep, kind of deep. I, gotta break, I had to break that down too far. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep on moving. Love this family. Oh, God, with a passion. And God talks about love. That's what God is all about. Having love, one for another. Then he's old school. Horseshoe man. Mm -hmm. See? Man, them young boys, you don't know I'm in a horseshoe. You start talking about horseshoes, they think you mean you're throwing the horse on the shoe. <laughs> How you gonna throw a horse on a shoe? That was anything. But if you know old school, I remember I used to go down to Marble Shop in State when I was working, and the boys used to pitch horseshoes during State Time. <laughs> <laughs> and something and some about horseshoes. It's not just about throwing the shoe. See, any old breakfast in here, you got to be able to talk stuff too. Yeah. You can't just play horseshoes if you don't know how to talk stuff. Because you got to talk about what you're going to do before you do it. Then you're praying that you do what you're talking about. And if you happen to do what you say you're going to do, then you got more to talk about. Quick <laughs> <laughs> huh? Ain't nothing but quick, old, bunch of old guys around playing, playing horseshoes. <laughs> Watch yourself! <laughs> you didn't see that, did you? <laughs> oh, it ain't nothing like it. When I heard that, I was like, good God Almighty, you talking about somebody that knows that they know. Good God Almighty, that's good stuff, ain't eh? That's good stuff. Them things is people, uh, is fading away. Those are things used to bring people together. Back in the old time way, man, you could have a hundred people around just pitching horseshoes. See, like, you know what I'm talking about? Huh? Yeah. Good Lord Almighty. And don't let nobody throw a few corn on the cob like that. Good God Almighty. Anybody got any more corn? Good God. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Woo! And then I, he a cowboy fan. Ain't that something? I'm a cowboy fan too. <laughs> when she was talking, I said, how about them cowboys? Good God Almighty. I said, we'll be them cowboy man too. Good Lord have mercy. I better keep on going if I can't go no more. <laughs> but everything that was transformed, we got married in 2012, and she talked about having been knowing each other down through the years. But in 2012, it was like Gideon and them both said, it's time to get it right. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. And if you like them old times, the old little goodies, uh, y'all probably had the song playing. Bet you by golly, why? <laughs> <laughs> Old Peter Paul said, You're the one that I've been waiting for <laughs> forever. <laughs> and then I'm sure you said, Let's get it on. <laughs> <laughs> good Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Woo! Right oh, good Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I know something's going on. Good Lord, have mercy. So I said, Calvin's life wasn't taken from us, truth be told, for 62 years. It was given to us. Jeremiah 1 9 says, for, gotta get a word in here. Jeremiah 1 9 says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. In other words, God said, He said, He touched me. If Peter was talking today, I'm sure he would say, 
When I was on my last leg and falling fast, he touched me. When my mind was wrapped in confusion, he touched me. When I was walking in darkness and couldn't see the light, he touched me. Like the woman with the issue of blood, he touched me. Like the man born blind, he touched me. Like the lame man who couldn't walk, like the Hebrew boys tossed in the fiery furnace, I believe he could say, he touched me. Like Daniel in the lion's den, he touched me. I'm sure he said when I couldn't figure out how to be a father, how to be a husband, how to be a friend, he touched me. When I was going through times that I didn't know which way to go, he touched me. When people counted me out, he touched me. Oh, when sick in body and body running with pain, he touched me. Times when I didn't know if I was going to see another sunrise, he touched me. Lonely, heavy hearted, couldn't find two love anywhere, he touched me. There were times when neither family nor friends could help me because they couldn't understand. That's when he touched me. I got up all those mornings for 64 years plus because he touched me. I was able to taste, touch, feel, and smell because he touched me. After everything that happened to me, I believe he will say it, it would have been easy to give up. It would have been easy to quit. But the reason I kept fighting, the reason I kept loving, the reason I kept hoping, the reason I kept believing was because he touched me. And I just want to take a moment right here and right now. Say, well, you drove away, you drove with somebody else. No matter how you got here, whether you slept in a bed last night or whether you slept on the street, I just want to say to you, whether you're a believer or a non-believer, whether you're a have or a have not, in spite of what you're going through, been through, or yet to go through, if you're still here today, it's only because he touched you. Yes, sir. You want to give God some praise, saints, because he Thank you, Lord. Because he touched you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm, can I just finish this thing up? Can I finish this thing up? Good Lord have mercy. Peter <laughs> would probably say, I could love those who didn't love me because he touched me. He would probably say, I'm resting right now because he touched me. Can anybody hear me? Yes, Is there anybody here that needs a touch? Say, say, no shame. If you need a touch, if you're going through something, let God touch you. If you need some guidance, let God touch you. Can you hear me? I'm, 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 I'm coming there. Well, I, I'll just, I can't speak for you, I'll speak for me. I need a touch. I always ask God to yes, touch sir. me. Yes, sir. Because yes, I know I'm undone. Yes, sir. I know there's nothing complete about me. There's always something need fixing. Yes, sir. So you can't be ashamed to say, Lord, yes, sir. touch me. Can you hear me? Yes, cool. Lord. Y'all let people keep it real. Amen. Can I keep it real? Amen. Some people don't ask God to what? Yes, touch you. But when you ain't right, feeling low, you'll go to the liquor store. Ask the man behind the counter to give me something that will touch you. Oh, y'all want to talk now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, hello. Because <laughs> the boy's in the car waiting for you. And when you're on the way there, you tell the man, I need a little something to touch you. Who is that? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the boy's been going to bring them back something because they need a little. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy! I mean, let me let me let that go. Good Lord, have mercy! I, I, I'm just talking, gentlemen. Now. I'm just talking. Let me say this in conclusion. The Bible says in Second Peter one five through five through seven. When you get grounded, you know, ain't about nobody else. It's about you. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody asks the question, do you know the Lord? Songwriter wrote the songs that said, "You should have been there." When the Lord saved me. Mm -hmm. 
We accept the saying in translation is, when you're in your weakest time, when nobody's there but you and God, mm -hmm. only God knows what you're speaking to him. Yes. Your heart is open to him. It ain't about what other people think, say, or whatever. That's between you and your God. And I'm sure Bibi had a God moment when him and his God had a conversation. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. The Bible says, in Peter, it says, give it all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. Virtue is basically energy and power. With your faith, you got to add something. You can't just live off faith. You got to add something. So he says, and to your faith, you got to add some virtue. And to your virtue, you got to add some knowledge. You got to get some wisdom, godly wisdom in your life. In the, and while you're going through your trials, while you're going through your tribulations, God will be with you. God will bless you. And he says, with knowledge, you got to get some temperance. Temperance is simply self control. You got to have faith. You got to get some knowledge. And with all of those things, you got to have some self control. And then he says, to that, Temperance, you got to add brotherly kindness. Mm -hmm. And that's just to treat everybody like they're your brothers and your sisters. Yeah. And then you got to have some charity, some love. He said, if these abound in you, you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm coming in right now. But I want to end with this. It also, I didn't mention this, but uh, obedient also that wrestling. Now I'm an old Westerner. <laughs> oh, and the older they are, the better they are. My grandkids say, Papa, every time we come around, you looking at Western. And sometimes they ain't even got no color. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. People say, oh, man, how you gonna look at that? When a man got a six shooter and shoot 20 times. <laughs> Y'all ain't heard me. <laughs> I, 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 I be counting. When I was young, I didn't pay no attention. But now that I'm older, oh, I be counting. Now I see the man behind the rock. <laughs> but 20, 30 people come in. He got one gun. <laughs> Six shoes. <laughs> Hopefully he ain't got no bullets. <laughs> and for 20 minutes, oh God. pow, 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 pow. <laughs> One day I started counting. Oh God. And then it's happened 30 times. <laughs> I'm telling you, but I still like them. And I, I look at, and you keep ahead of them. And no matter what they do, they never do this. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I knock down. Yep. Drag out, man, pick them up, throw them off the cliff, fall in the water. When they come up, head still on. <laughs> huh? I see them flip, head still on. That's what you got to do in this life. You got to hold on, no matter what hits you. Mm -hmm. Can't let go, son. You got to keep your head. No matter what hits you, you got to keep your head. And I sat there, and I, I, I saw him kind of be enjoying them Western. But let me share this with you, then I'm going to leave you alone. If I can tell you this little story. This story about three sisters. 192, 194, 196. They wanted to live independent of other people. They wanted to take care of themselves. They didn't want to be in a place where other people had to take care of them. So they got a place and all of them began to live together. All was going well. One day, the 96 year old decided she was going upstairs and she wanted to take a bath. So she went up the steps and she went to get in the tub. And then she couldn't remember whether she was getting in the tub or out the tub. You know how you start not, things ain't working right. So she hollered downstairs and she said, I need some help. I don't know whether I'm getting in the tub or out the tub. The 94 year old said, mm, give me a minute, I'll be up to give you a hand. She starts up the steps. She get halfway. She said, Lord have mercy. Now she don't know whether she was going up the stairs <laughs> or coming down the stairs. And she said, Lord, somebody, I need some help. I don't know whether I'm going up the stairs or coming down the stairs. Well, the 92 year old, she's sitting in her office doing work, she hear him. She said, Lord, Lord, Lord. 
I am so glad. I ain't like other people. Still got my health. Still got my strength. God done blessed me with a sound mind. Not on wood. She said, I'll be able to help both of y'all. Soon I'll see you at the door. <laughs> Saints, I say that to say this. Everybody needs some help yes. sometime. Yes, yes. Amen. You ain't going to make it out of this place by yourself. Amen. God provides somebody. I heard a young brother was talking. God put me there to give you some guidance, to give you some understanding. And even though he's gone, those words do not return void. Yes, sir. Every time you make a left where he told you you should make a right, his voice is coming back. So we thank God and don't be so prideful that you try to make it by yourself. And the greatest help you can get goes by the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. He'll be there when all others walk away. And just like I heard about Benny, huh? if you're called, Oh, he gonna answer. Yes, Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. So I thank God, Joy, family. Thank God for giving me the opportunity to be here with you today. Mm -hmm. I pray God that some, somehow, somewhere, your hearts have been made a little lighter. Thank you, Lord. And just understand the songwriter said, "This joy I had, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it Thank you, Lord. away. That joy." That you have. It might seem like it's gone. That's just the house where he lived. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. He's in a, his spirit is already resting with our Savior. And that joy that you receive from all those words, all those memories, all those dances. <laughs> Can you hear me? Sometimes I feel as though you might wake up. In the middle of the night, dancing around, don't even know why. See, I see you right now flipping. <laughs> Good Lord have mercy. And the spirit comes back. And guess what? It hit hard now. I ain't going to take this. It hit hard. Because the spirit said, you think you're lonely now. What is that? Good Lord. <laughs> That's me to let you know. I ain't going nowhere. My spirit is still going to be with you. My spirit, spirit is still going to bring you peace. When you think about me, he wants you to know everything is going to be all right. Give God a hand. Thank you. Is that all right? Thanks all. And we will conclude on this end. And I'll have to share the give you the mission. And then we'll be leaving from here. We're going to go to the cemetery. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. yes, Before I close up, put your hands together one more time. <laughs> and, uh, Linda Falk, the benediction, and all those who have the ability to stand, why don't you stand with me? Father God, as we prepare to leave this place for natural presence, you. I pray that you bless us with traveling mercies as we go over the highway. Keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lead God and direct us to our destination that we may get there with greater peace, greater love, and greater joy. You, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, both now and for them. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believes in me shall never die.
family, friends, as we come to the final resting place for our dear brother Calvin, we were on, on this side of Jordan, knowing that we'll see him again on the other side. As your tears go forth, understand that your tears are just representative of the love that he had for his family and his community. And your love by your tears is showing that investment that he put into his family and his community. To the family, to the wife, to all those that are here. Where God tells us for as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our brother Calvin. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the resurrection at the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming to judge the world, the earth, and the sea shall give up their dead. The bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and be made like his glorious body, according to that power by which he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day, our daily bread, and give us our debts, we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but the world of evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, we gather beside this grave today to lay to rest the body of our friend and loved one. We do so remembering another grave in another place, the tomb that received the body of our Lord Jesus. As Jesus came from the grave to live again, we know that all who die in him shall never truly die. We come today to tell you that we walk by faith and not by sight. The word of God tells us, do not be afraid. God said he's the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys to death and hate. So all those here under the sound of my voice at such a time as this, as we say our final goodbyes, I will say to you, I know it's time of pandemic and time of social distancing and you can't get close like you used to. But I say to family members, take this opportunity here today. If you were somehow apart one from another, take this moment to come together once again. Understand that time and, and days are not promised. This could be the last time that we see each other face to face. I often say to individuals, hug somebody before you go, because it might be the last time. And if you're afraid to give them a hug, then just give them one of these. And, just, and don't, don't, don't literally give it to them. <laughs> but just let them know my heart is with you. Let your family know you can speak love. You ain't got to touch them. You can say it with such sincerity, they'll feel your love. And the family right now, they need to feel your love. So if you need to tell somebody I'm sorry, it's no better time than now. Is that all right? To so the family, thank God for you. Thank God for the opportunity to be with you. Again, I count it a joy and I count it a privilege. I thank God for the ministers, that the administration to come forth to bless the family. Thank God for you. And I don't know what you say, but it's all right. It's okay. Can you hear me? It's okay. Beatty lived his life. You have yet to live. So he's, his part is finished. You're going to have to decide what are you going to do from this day forward. And Jesus Christ is still Lord. And I said, and I want you to hear this well, without him. You can do nothing, have nothing, and you'll be nothing. Christ is there. Is that all right? Thank you. Amen.